Hi, Jean. Just if you could start us off with an, an appraisal of, of where you are uh, in the game at the end of the day's play. Yeah, I, th I think it's finely poised. I think the first session tomorrow is huge for both teams. You know, if if we can turn some of that, some of the skill that we showed tonight again and tomorrow morning, we get some of the luck that we probably, you know, no one deserves luck. But if if we can put some of the, if we can get some of the things that come our way again. Um, we could bowl them out and, and give us a day and a half to chase something down. So, well, it's, I, I think tomorrow morning's huge. I mean, I suppose every morning of every test match is, is huge, but tomorrow is a big one for both teams. And I know the, the guys are pretty big on, on no regrets cricket and kind of committing to the, to the style all the same, whether a few, whether it's last night or this morning, a few angry, angry batters a bit disappointed in themselves at times. Uh, oh, look... We've always said that we want to play an aggressive brand. Um, it's not always going to come off, and it's, it's not a cop-out. Um, it's just reality. Sometimes, as Mitchell Stark said before, they were pretty accurate with, with how they went about their plan. They, they saw an opportunity last night, and they stuck at it again this morning. We want to keep changing momentum. We want to force swings in the game that come back our way, um, a bit like you would see in, in white ball cricket. You know, how do we change in white ball cricket? We want to change the momentum so we get back on top. And I think that's part of the plan about how we want to go our batting as well. We want to keep scoring, we want to keep pushing the pressure back on the opposition. Um, and it didn't work. It just didn't come off today. Um, but there's another opportunity in the fourth innings and, and there's a lot more on it in the fourth innings when it's chasing down a score. And obviously, Gene, you know a lot about the importance of a spinner and, and how the lack of a spinner can, can, on their side can change the balance. And I guess if you wanted to do what the opposition least want you to do with Nathan Lyon on crutches, maybe making them bowl a lot of overs would, would have been what you wanted to do. Is that fair? I sort of lost you, lost you there, but... Look, they, they bowled 70 odd overs and yeah. you're 130. I mean, but... like, I suppose it, in the past, after 70 overs, we would have been on three or four, 350, 400. So like, it just didn't work, work that way today. You know, in the second innings, it's going to be different for them. Stark has already said that about... They're going to have to use a different opportunity. Um, it's a real shame for Nathan, the situation he's been put in with, with his calf. But look, with them being a possible bowler down, it, it, might, main, it might make the big boys' job a little bit harder. Um, if we can get them coming back and turning back around and around and around and keep putting the pressure back on them, I think you know, we, could see, we could see an opportunity for us to get over the line. Putin, um, are you... How's Ollie Pope? Basically, is he is he going to be okay to bat? He he obviously looked like he had another nasty tumble today in the field. Yeah, poor guy. Um, oh, look, he's he's such a big person in the changing room, and to see a guy like that go out there and bat yesterday like he did um, after the fall and landing on his shoulder, it's, he is sore, but um, he should have he should be okay again to bat tomorrow. I mean, he's never going to turn down an opportunity to bat for England, and and with an opportunity to win a game. I, I can't see Oli Pope ever saying no to that. Um, he's grown since he's come into this team, and I think with the responsibility of being vice captain, but also the support of the other batters around him, and what he offers the other batters as well, I think he'll see as an opportunity to take this game on. And he didn't field uh, for a lot of the first innings, uh, and then he did bat, and then he fielded in the second innings, but kind of stationed in different positions from usual was. What was the kind of situation there? Was he was he always definitely going to field? Would England have preferred him to not field? Was he made to field? Look, we're a bit bewildered by it all, I suppose. We haven't clarified that yet with, with the officials as to why he was told he had to get back out there and field. I mean, it's, it's a pretty tough situation when you nearly bust your shoulder and you're being told it's an, it was an external. Was it still an external? We don't know. Um, but then he goes out and bats the way he did and... And the match officials may have changed their decision on how, how he affects the game. So, look, he, got, he had to go back out there. It was always going to happen, wasn't it? Like, he's so committed this, to this team, he was always going to fall on something. Um, and now he's back off icing his shoulder. So, I, I'm very certain that he'll bat. Um, and I'm very certain he'll bat at three. And I'm very certain he'll be determined to score some runs for England tomorrow. Is he, has he made it worse? Do, 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 we know oh, what the, do you know what the injury is? Mate, you're talking to the wrong person, boss. Uh, I've got no idea. <laughs> um, Gian, what advice have you given to Mo over his finger 
so that if and when he is required for the rest of the series, he can get through a test match without that, that finger opening up again. Yeah, it was pretty pretty disgusting at the end of the test, but um, look, he's he's been around the group. We've, we've tried to look after as much as we can. It's looking in really good shape. It's healed really, really well. Um, he's bowled the last three days, but we, we really have to look after him. Um, look, he's come into this team last minute and he did a superb job for us. Yes, we didn't get over the line, but he put himself on the line for the team, which is, is a change from, I suppose, the past. You know, like, I think the way he's looked after that finger shows a lot of care for the group. And the way he was bowling yesterday anyway, I, you know, it's the best I've ever seen him bowl, to be honest with you. So, fingers crossed again that the next couple of days he gets to rest it. Um, and he gets to Headingley and he's, he's ready to go. But if it was me, well, to be fair, I'd love to be out there playing, but if it was me, I, I'd be 100% certain to be, I'd be good to go. In your experience, how do you stop that cut happening again? And What did you do to... Mate, it's so hard. Up? It's so hard. It's just the way it is. It's part of the job. Um, you just try and look after your hands as much as possible. They're, I mean, they're, they're your money in around there, so... It's part of the game, you know, you're playing dry, hot conditions, sometimes it gets humid and you get stick clammy hands and all of a sudden your, your finger splits and you've still got to bowl overs. It's, you know, Mo hasn't bowled 30 overs in a while um, and that was always going to be part of the risk of bringing him in, but we knew that and he knew that and he, yeah, he still said yes and yes and yet we still asked him. And, Oh, we're so lucky to have Mo on our side to replace Leachy, who's obviously done so much for this team. Um, the way, is there a way to look after your fingers? <sighs> Just bowl, you know, and that's probably the only way to do it. But bowl regularly, bowls four overs a game, so he's probably not used to it. And he hasn't picked up a Dukes for two years. I'm cheating, I'm cheating uh, Jeton, just uh, quickly with. Ollie, just to clarify, he was um, he was told by match officials that he had to re return to the field. Is that well? It's, it's a bit confusing. Well, we we think we assume that he was asked to here to be back out on the, out on the field. Otherwise, we'd have to field with ten men, and I, like that made no sense to me I, or us anyway. So we threw him out there at the risk that he wouldn't have to touch the ball. But it was always going to be a case, you know. Like we're still waiting for clarification on what what's going on with the situation. It's a bit messy. If I'm being honest with you, um, we're probably as frustrated as, as everyone else that was out there that, that saw what happened, and him. And he's probably more angry at the situation than anything else. But, look, he's a good kid, and we know that he's going to rock up again tomorrow with a smile on his face and, and put him for the team. And just very quickly, uh, in terms of uh, how many you may be able to chase in, in three or four sessions, given this team has you know, raised the bar in terms of what's possible, say, in a fourth innings, what, what is a realistic target that you could, could chase down? I don't know. I mean, we've seen some amazing things from this team. It's going to be a different ask against a different attack, but we've seen some crazy things um, from this lineup in the last year. This team's about breaking records. Um, they want to set new standards. You know, they want to sell out gap grounds, and, and a way to do that is, is to chase down, well, to firstly to bowl them out and set the crowd alight and then chase whatever it is down. <clears throat> Gee, last week we were in Edgbaston, it looked like there was a ploy to put a fair bit of pressure on Scott Boland. Assuming that Nathan Lyon is ruled out of at least Headingley in the rest of the series, Australia's probably going to have to go with a very inexperienced spinner in Todd Murphy. Does he become a clear target for England to try and pressure and take down? If that's the mate, case? he's a good bowler, mate. You know, I think you're talking him down. He's just, Not at all. He's just as good as, as Nathan Lyon. Uh, Nathan's there, I suppose, because he's taken five and, almost 500 test wickets and he should be there. But to have Todd Murphy backing up, he's a good bowler and he's going to ask different questions to Nathan. So we're going to have to look at different ways to play him. We don't know how or what way we'll look to attack him if we can until the opportunity arises. So I suppose we'll worry about that then. But what I will say, there will be a little bit of respect shown over the next few days at how we could go about it. And, um, and we'll look at it from there. Thanks, mate. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers guys. Thank you.